Welcome to our church at study. Ephesians speaks especially to the times like our own in which the lore of the world and passing of time threaten to dull Christian discipleship. It lists up Christ and accepts the significance of the following. Him as engaged, active members in his church as we live out the hope of his return. This quarter, we have the privilege of listening prayerfully to Ephesians and experiencing a new excitement of the following, Jesus in challenging times. Our teachers have studied and they are ready to start. Good morning, Sabbath School. Thank you once again for being a part of our worldwide Sabbath School class. We have been studying the book of Ephesians and today, we are looking at the topic of the call to stand. Shall we invite the Holy Spirit's presence to be with us? Father and God, you have brought us once again to this opportunity of study. May we hear, understand, and accept your truths so that in these days and in these times, we are able to respond to the call to stand in Christ's name. Amen. 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 And welcome again. If we can um, visit our, our PowerPoint that tells us call to stand. Let us start there today. Call to stand. And if we can go back one, one um, the call to stand. If you would look carefully at what is presented here, you would see that there are many things going on. But our character is looking up to heaven, no matter what is going on around him. We have um, storms, we have um, people who are coming through um, with chariots and, and battles, and, and there are battles around him. But Paul now, in writing to um, Ephesians and, and to us also, is saying that there is a call to stand despite what is going on around us. And in the next slide, in the next slide, we are going to see um, the things, the, the memory text. It says, be strong in the Lord and in his and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. And I was fascinated by what we have um, represented in this slide. So Rodriguez, it, it, it is trying to show us what the items in the armor looks like. Mm. It says, having girded your waist with truth. Having girded the waist with truth. Having put on the breastplate, the second one, we put on the breastplate of righteousness. Amen. Having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Or above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of, word God. of God, Amen. and praying always, being watchful to this end with all preservation and supplication, all preservation and supplication. And let us look at our next slide as to what our study um, looks like. And, and I hope you can see that and even read it with me. It says, we are immersed, immersed in a cosmic, in a war. cosmic war, war between, between two, two kingdoms. kingdoms. When we join the kingdom of Jesus, we become a part of his defense and his promotion. Amen. Upon entering the battle, 
We cannot rely on our own strength, weapons, our own weapons, or, or, or ability. ability. Our source of power is, is Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Oh, yes. Yes, we fight dressed in the armor of God in a war that Jesus has already won. Praise the Lord. Uh, and so, um, with respect to the preparation for battle and the call for battle, the preparation for battle, um, if we can go to the next slide, I'm, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Jackson. If we can go to the, the next slide. Starting with preparation for, for battle, and the slide before that um, tells us, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in Amen. the power of his it's might. Mine. Mr. Jackson. This is a very um, encouraging lesson, I think. Paul conclude, concludes the letter to the Ephesian church with a call to battle. <clears throat> and we read part of it already. But uh, verses Ephesians 6, 10 through 13 says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his might, in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. Right. And after you have done every, everything, stand to stand. Yeah. Now, even though this letter was written to the Ephesians, it's applicable for us today. God's church faces challenges from the world today because the devil is still waging war on God's people. Yes. The whole thing since sin entered the earth is warfare. Now, when an ancient army prepared to go to the battlefield, the general would stand at the front and uh, rally the troops um, and tell them to get up and fight. Um, in 1 Samuel 4 and 9, he said, fight like a man, be a man and mm -hmm. fight. But when we look at the Old Testament, we see that when God's people faced an army, the rallying cry, cry, cry included a different aspect. Uh, the soldier's courage was not based on their own strength, yeah. but on the fact that God fought for them. For yeah. them. For them. Yeah. Now, yeah. aware of the spiritual battle that we are in, in 2023, Yes. Paul encourages us to strengthen ourselves mm. in the Lord and in the power of his might by doing three things. Stand firm, be strong, and put on the whole armor of God. Amen. Now, we will be discussing these three commands that Paul gives us all this week and next week also. But we need to know that when we take this seriously and stand firm and be strong, when we put on the arm of God, we do this 
because then God will become our strength. And God is so much more powerful than Satan. Yeah. So a little bit of his strength <laughs> is enough to overcome all the enemy schemes. Amen. Now, First John, I was encouraged when I looked at First John 4.4. 4, and it reads, <clears throat> greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Mm -hmm. And so the smallest amount of divine power can overcome the greatest amount of the enemy's power. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are in a war. But the title of this section of the lesson is Battle, battle Speech. So I went back through the Old Testament and started looking at the battle speech. And I was encouraged to know that even though we are in this war, there is no reason for us yeah. to even think about losing mm, yeah. or no reason to be afraid. Uh, yeah. uh, while we are in this war. And I'm not going to read all of them to you, but I want to give you a flavor of what God tells us yeah, in the Old Testament. In Deuteronomy 31, and that's where I'm going to start. In Deuteronomy 31, verse 6, he says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. And then he didn't just stop there. He says he will never leave you nor forsake you. Mm -hmm. And there's one version that says, for the Lord your God will personally go mm -hmm. with you. Amen. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. And, and that was encouraging. Then I went to Psalms 18, verse 39. And David says, For you, Lord, equipped me with your strength for the battle. You made those who rise against me sink under me. My computer is doing something here. In Deuteronomy 20 verses 1 to 3, the scripture reads, when you, when you go to battle against your enemies and see horses and chariots and an army greater than yours, do not be afraid of them because the Lord your God who brought you up out of Egypt will be with you. When you are about to go into battle, the priest shall come forward and address the army. He shall say, hear Israel, today you are going into battle against your enemies. Do not be faint-hearted or afraid. Do not panic or be terrified of them. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies and to give you victory. Amen. This is a promise. Exodus 14 says, the Lord shall fight for you and he shall hold your peace. Uh, one more, Isaiah 35, 4 says, say to them who are fearful of heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Um, he will come and save you. And you know, as I'm reading this over and over, uh, and, and there was about 60 of these verses that were powerful that says you should not be afraid 
of this battle that we're in. When you joined Christ, you joined a warfare. But don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Um, then I went to 2 Chronicles 20. And it said, listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. And so I'm going to end my portion with listen, Fondren, and all you people who are in this battle for the Lord. This is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of the vast evil forces out there. For the battle is not yours, but God's. And we're going to continue to unpack this all this week and next week. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Jackson. Finding strength in Christ. We're going to give with our encouragement to take heart because Jesus Christ has overcome the world. And following what we have in our presentation here, the conflict surrounding us is not a war against us as simple soldiers on one side or the other, but it's a war between Almighty God and one of his creations. A war between Almighty God and one of his creations called Satan. This Satan depends totally on God for survival. This Satan who is fighting, who, to whom this war is referenced, this part in this war against God depends on God for God's sustaining power as much as each of us depends on God for sustaining power. While Satan forces, uh, focuses on attacking the church, each member is supported and strengthened by the three persons of the Trinity. So here in Ephesians 6 verses 10 to 20, we see Jesus, uh, we see Paul by inspiration is introducing that revelation he got, he, he, he got from God that reminds us that the evil one wants to capture our minds. And we're going to see that in those texts, in the reading of those texts. And God is reminding us that if he can capture, if the evil one can capture our minds, then he can influence and enslave us to do the things that he wants us to do. One of the limitations, we, one of the things we're going to find about Satan is that everything he has lost, having been thrown out of heaven, even direct access to God, and being the most beautiful angel and most talented musical angel, every, every one of those things that he has lost, he wishes to deny us access to as well by capturing our minds. Ephesians, however, in these, in these verses, Ephesians 6, 10 to, 40 to 20, we see that the, the, the believer, the, the Ephesian believer, the Christian believer, ultimately has access to the entire Godhead, to Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 6, verse 10. 10 reads, finally, uh, so he moves from talking to, 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 to parents and children and even to slaves, and he switches quickly to this place that brings us to understand 
that, the, that there is a battle. So not only in the home, apparently, he's reminding us, not only in our workplaces, he's reminding us, but in our in the very fact that we've become Christians, he's saying, ah, there is a battle. And he introduces, and he, and he brings in a very interesting text. Finally, if you have not paid attention before, pay attention now. And he says, there's a need to stand by saying, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. You know, this is from a, from a child. This is one of the texts that has, uh, has, has strengthened my mind a lot. In this very first, in this very, in this one sentence, he says, he, he uses versions of strength three times. He says, you be strong, strength, and in the Lord who himself is a, a strong, absolute strength. But he says, in the strength, so God is strong, God has strength. And he said, in that strength, you must also find strength in the ultimate might of God. I think it's a tremendously powerful text if we really can delve into it. The, my, my strongest point, or you know, those of us who know the, 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 the people like Mike Tyson and the Holyfield, this says, look, in the strongest mm. part of the Mike Tyson, that punch he has, and that strong man, if you focus on the strength of his strongest point, um, just in the human sense, just imagine God in his absolute strength. He said, Paul is saying, in that absolute strength, there is still a strength. There's a might in that strength that we need to, that we can tap into and experience divine presence. And he says, look, because there's a warfare, we need to put on the entire armor of God. We need to put on the entire defense of God. And here that entire defense of God, even though in our script here, we see Jesus Christ, he provides us with the power of his might. In that, in that arm of God is the total Godness, the Trinity of God, that you might be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. And he tells us what he tells, he introduces as against uh, uh, why we need that armor? Because their schemes, their subtleness, their subtleties, subtle, subtleties of the devil that sometimes we take for granted and the things we choose to eat, the things we choose to say, the things we choose to have an opinion about. He said, there is, might be something in that scheme of the devil that is trying to shift us into these, what we might think might, mind, might be minor things, might be the way where the devil is kept trying to capture us. And verse 11 says, uh, put on that arm of God that you might be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. And he continues and he says, for we do not wrestle. We do not have a contest against flesh and blood, against what we see and physically, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers, as if, as it were, he's introducing the formidable force, uh, a, a force that, 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 that has spent years being formed. And we in our newbornness, I mean, what, maximum 100 years, maximum 120 years now, um, we, we, we've got to be mindful that this thing exists a long time before us, um, that we might be able to, against the cosmic powers over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. So he introduces darkness, our limitations, um, as against, as again, we can see once we, well, there's a contrast there with light. That says that knowing King Jesus is the place to live. You see, um, he goes on and reminds us what's our duty. He gives us a duty in verse 13. Therefore, take up, do something, do something. Right? Um, not in our own mind, but take up the whole arm of God, and you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. So he's also saying that on our daily, on our daily pathway. There are evil days, there are evil times in the days, and for a lifetime, it's a lifetime battle, um, that there is the struggle with the evil one, and we need to be able to put on God's armor, and there are a few items of God's armor that we need to put on, um, the totalness of God's armor, one of the things we've got to remember, that here Paul wanted, you know, um, the, the devil try all kinds of things, but he, so he had Paul in prison, being guarded, but in that very same place of being guarded um, by, by, by soldiers, Paul 
got a message. The soldier is well protected um, in a physical space. And he's seeing that this evil that pervades, the evil that has brought him to prison, um, if and he translates from that soldier's garment a message for us. So when the devil thought he had Paul, he was really put setting Paul up to be able to leave a leave directions for us, drawing from the arm of the soldier for that total protection to make certain that he remains in a safe place. And of course, continue stand there for having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. You know, that breastplate that protects the soldier from his neck right down to his thigh, that totalness and that shoe, that readiness to be able to carry the gospel. He also says also, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith. There's a strength that comes from knowing that King Jesus cares for us. In fact, when I read verse 10, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. And even as I try to understand the strongest man I know and the strength of that strongest man, I can only interpret this to mean the absolute love of King Jesus. He will carry us through. He cares for us. He will protect us. Uh, John 16, verse 33 says, but take heart. I have overcome the world. At the cross, Jesus completed his victory over sin, sinfulness, and death, the consequence of death. And he says, if you believe in me, or if you understand what I have done, live in me, for I have found the victory. Um, John, 14, John 16, 33, I have said these things to you that in me you have you may have peace in the world. You will have tri tribulation, but take heart. I, King Jesus, I, the sacrificial lamb, I, your savior, I have overcome the, the world. He reminds us, and Ephesians 6, of course, 10 reminds us to be strong. Then Ephesians 1, 19 reminds us, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe? according to the working of his great might. And here again, Paul repeats this might of the mightiest that we ever know, God Almighty, just trust in him. And he says to us, when we put on the whole arm of God, we will be able to stand. Get, a pre, get, to, get to that deep place of understanding God's divine ultimate all power, power um, God's ultimate power. And if we can rest in that, Knowing that when daddy God turns up, when daddy, yeah, for me as a child, when daddy jilts, Rupert jilts, I know uh, I know nothing, nothing. Um, mm -hmm. um, uh, economics, physical, nothing to worry about. Uh, he, he made a difference. Um, Ephesians 6, 4 to remind us, stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of rice, righteousness and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness um, a soldier must be ready, not only to not only to to face the death, to, to take up the battle as soon the battle as soon as soon the the battle sound is uh, is heard, but also to be able to stand strong, to be able to be comfortable, and to be able to take on the victory that comes with being ready. Ephesians six and verse sixteen says, in all circumstances, take up the field of faith with which you can extinguish all the shield of faith. Um, that shield that protects you from every fiery dart mm. that, 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 that may be thrown at you, that you may be able to stand. And faith is the answer. Paul does not only introduce love in verse 10, but he introduced as, um, the faith side that says, God did it and he did it for you. For indeed, God is is our banner. He is Jehovah Nisi. He has won it all for us. And he's calling us into that place that says, here, if only you can rely or live in the victories I have brought to you, you will be able to stand. We'll be able to stand strong. May God give each of us the grace to be able to, to experience God in a, li in, a, in, a, in, a, in a little more depth so that we will know that he cares enough and he has won it all for us, and he, he wants us to share in those victories that he has, that he has purchased and won um, on our behalf. May God continue to bless us. He says in, in, verse, in verse 18, therefore, 
praying at all times in the spirit, that which this, that which the spirit is leading us to, to ask for. For we, not know, we do not know what to ask for, but the spirit guides us with all prayer and supplication to that end. Keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication not only for ourselves, but our fellow brethren who also need divine strength to be able to finish this war successfully. Let us carry each other over the bat, over, over, over the finish line. Jesus Christ is coming soon and put a final defeat, a final destruction to the evil one. May God give us the grace to live each day in his might. Amen, amen. Tuesday's lesson is entitled The Cosmic Conflict. And it should come as no surprise that Paul uses the language of military um, uh, to describe the struggle that believers have in this, in this warfare. Now, earlier, Elder Jix just used this uh, reference about heavenly places. So when we look at this slide, it says, using the clear military language, Paul urges us to put on the armor of light. Armor is needed when you go out in struggle and a fight because you have an adversary who is also going to be on the attack. So with the breastplate of righteousness and love and as a helmet, the hope of salvation, but he doesn't speak of a physical confrontation. These heavenly places is where this battle is being, is being fought. And so it brings to mind the question of how do we participate in this cosmic conflict? Is this all theoretical or is it an uh, actual thing that's taking place? So the book to the Ephesians is giving us this whole scenario of how we participate in the cosmic conflict. First, uh, Ephesians 2, 4 through 6 point out that because of God's love, he has enlisted us in his army. And, and when he has enlisted us, we are participants on the battlefield. We are ambassadors to uh, the enemy's uh, power. So Ephesians 3, 10 points this out. Although we are ambassadors, we have power because he strengthened us with his power. Ephesians 3.16 speaks to that. He equips us uh, with gifts to be able to carry out and participate in this cosmic conflict. Uh, his clothes, he clothes us in righteousness and holiness. And Ephesians 6.3 talks about uh, the armor to withstand the battle. Now, we were looking at Paul's writing, and Paul is credited with 13 books, and even uh, Hebrews is, is credited to him, 14 books. And so when we look across his writing, this military symbolism is frequently used. Let me cite a few texts. Uh, Colossians 2.15 says, He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them uh, in him. So here we have the struggle between rulers and authorities who are opposed to us. Uh, then in Romans, Romans thir uh, 13, verse 11, the word of God says, besides this, you know this time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone. The day is at hand. So let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy. So once again, Paul is calling like an army to battle for us to recognize that we must wear this armor. Then in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning with verse 6, he speaks this way. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk are drunk at night. 
But since we belong to the day, let yeah. us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for our helmet, the hope of salvation. As Paul lays it out for us in Ephesians, these implements of war. Then in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, beginning with verse 3, we speak about the weapons of our warfare. For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. Amen. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your <laughs> obedience is complete. Oh, Paul does not mince words here. Going back to the first uh, chapter of Ephesians, he speaks about this immeasurable greatness of his power to those who believe. It, it reads in verse 18. Having the eyes of your eyes enlightened that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glory inherited Amen. in the same? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe? according to the workings of his great might, that he might work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in those heavenly places again. So Paul's use of this military symbolism, we're able to see that there's a conflict going on, my people, my friends, between good and evil. And it's a long-running cosmic war. We're in the midst of it right now. Battles ebbs and flow between the two armies when they face each other down through the ages until one wins the great final confrontation. So we, whether we know it, whether we are fully engaged or not, are in a cosmic conflict. It begs the question, what are some of the ways that you personally have experienced the reality, not only of the great conflict, but of the victory that we can get for ourselves in Jesus. And why is understanding his victory for us so foundational to our hope and experience? This, my friend, is when you have to take what is being shared with you in a very personal way. Because we are being called, we have been engaged, we've been enlisted, if you will, to take part in a great war that is before us. So sometimes that family member or that that job uh, uh, associate that's giving you trouble, that's not them, that's not <laughs> enemy, using them. And so we must be able to come to grips with standing. Now, I looked up this word stand, standing firm is Wednesday's uh, lesson. And Paul uses that word a lot, 53 times uh, counting, uh, if you take the King James verses, 53 times he uses the word stand, as if that is just the, the way that we are going to be going forward. So let's consider the following. Battles in ancient times had three phases. Phase number one was advancing towards the enemy. Phase number two was standing firm and defending the position in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And then phase number three was advancing and forcing the enemy to retreat. The slide tells us that the decisive point that marked victory was standing. If you could stand firm in your position, you could force their enemy to retreat. So that is why Paul invites us to stand firm against the schemes of the devil, to resist him in the evil day, and having pushed back the enemy, to continue standing firm. So unity also plays a significant role in achieving victory. We are called to Amen. present a united front, Amen. a united front at home, a united church in the church house, a united front on our jobs. We are to present a united front against the enemy's power. 
Why is that? Because we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers, principalities, against rulers of the darkness of the age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So Paul is inviting us, uh, is kind a way of saying, really in challenging us to take our position on the line of defense in God's word. That's why when we read Ephesians, excuse me, Ephesians chapter 6, uh, beginning with verse 10, it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Um, we are called to take our part in terms of striving to stand for the gospel. Again, Paul uses this language. We go over to uh, Philippians uh, chapter 1 and verse 27. It says, only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. So whether I come and see you or in absence, I may hear of you that you're standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, side by side for the faith of the gospel. So there is, there is no relaxed stand. You know, when I, when I think about the concept of standing, it almost sounds like it's a passive thing. But you have to think of it in light of this. You are being attacked, so you can't give any ground. So standing is very much an active engagement of heart, mind, and soul, and spirit. And so very that's why much. Paul uses that uh, military imagery, because if you imagine a battle, and the, uh, the earlier picture showed us what the Roman um, Roman soldiers' uh, 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 implements were. And here, all of them have been taken to give us an understanding and appreciation for what is involved in this kind of warfare. I'm trusting that all of us are looking to and engaging our God and Savior for the strength that we need for the battle. Because again, as was said by Dr. Jackson, the battle's not ours, but the Lord's. <laughs> All we have to That's do right. is stand in his might. Uh, Dr. Carrington, what about those rulers and authorities? Wrestling against evil powers. And if I can have the slide, <laughs> wrestling against evil, evil powers. Rulers and authorities. We make the mistake of misidentifying the enemy. We think the enemy is the boss who's threatening to fire us if we don't work on the Sabbath, or a sibling who spoke hurtful words. The true enemy is hidden behind, imperceptible to us. The powers that dominate this world of darkness or evil spiritual forces, our enemy is Satan and the angel. Let me ask the question that came from the Bible, from the study. The question asks us this, what should the reality of these supernatural evil powers against whom we ourselves are utterly helpless, what should that teach us regarding why we must grasp hold of the Lord Jesus, who is not only greater than these powers, but has already defeated them. Any, any response to that? Well, you know, we teach children. Am I, am I on? Yes. It, we teach children from, from little kids to be self-sufficient. Um, when they learn to tie their shoes, we clap, we, we do everything we can do. We teach 
we have a, a, a tendency within our human nature to want to control, to want to do this stuff ourselves. But what Paul is telling us is we can't do it. And we need to recognize that we cannot fight these powers, that God is the person. God can fight these powers for us. Amen. And so we need to submit to him. There's Does that a answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. There's also the, the challenge that sometimes the enemy that we can visibly see looks like someone that we love and and respect and care for. And we waste we when we are not able to recognize it is a cosmic struggle, we get upset with the person and not the power that's behind the struggle. Yes. So that's yes. why, you know, you have to be always aware and, and you need o only the power of Christ can give you that you are not wrestling against the person in front of you. You're wrestling with this, this entity, these, this authority, this principality that are, are manipulating and influencing. And much stronger than you. And if we were truthful, sometimes we <laughs> are the person that's, that's right. being cooperative with the enemy so that's why we can only do this in the power of christ amen amen in the in that question is we must grasp hold of the lord jesus who is not only greater than these evil powers the de demonic powers but has already defeated amen. all of them amen yes um in that you know, as a statistician, I uh, if I've won once, then the, it's likely I'll win the second time. If I've won 10, I'm likely to win the 11th. In this case, it's not only likely. The truth is Christ completed the victory at the cross. All the possible, all the possible, all the possible war types were defeated. It's just a matter of us laying hold on those victories. Um, until Christ put in his final appearing and destroy, well, and take over um, the crown that he has already won. Yeah. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, here is our takeaway for today. All who will be soldiers of the cross of Christ must gird on the armor and prepare for the conflict. They should not be intimidated by threats or terrified by dangers. They must be cautious in peril, yet firm and brave in facing the foe and doing battle for God. His final reward will be to share with Christ the throne of immortal glory. Amen. Shall we, shall we pray, Almighty God? We thank you for this, your Sabbath. We thank you for this lesson. We thank you for the reminder that you have won it all already. And in it, oh great God, in this conflict, in Ephesians 6 and verse 17, you remind us to take the helmet of salvation. The helmet protects our head, protects our mind, protects our thoughts, and your salvation protects our body protects us in this physical world. So, great God, renew our minds. Sanctify us. Give us clear thinking in this warfare. We receive from you the victory that you have already won, the victory that you invite us to participate in as someone right now is experiencing those ups and downs, those uncertainties as to what you want of his or her life. May that person find in you the strength of your strength, knowing, oh great God, that the victory has already been won by you. And you invite us to participate, to participate in your victories. So each of us receive from you, oh great God, the strength to live the life that you have lived. 
and as we are told in our final quote, so that we will finally be able to share with Christ the throne of immortal glory. We look forward for living the Christ-like life and ultimate, ultimately your throne and, and immortality for King Jesus has already achieved it. We thank you. We'll celebrate you this Holy Sabbath. You will be glorified through us. Others will experience you through the life that you live through us. We thank you. Fill us with your mind, oh great God. May we live in your victories. We will be shining stars for you. And we will stand. Having, the, having read your word, being constant in prayer, we receive strength to stand. We thank you. And with each standing, we'll go higher and higher and higher in faith and holiness. We thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you again for joining us. And I pray that you will take your stand in the call that has been given to us. This time we'd like to share with you our mission spotlight. We didn't think that we were hungry or we couldn't take shower because there were no hot water. We just were thinking about are we going to stay alive today or are we going to die? And we were on the brain all the time. But thank God we are still alive. I'm Ruslana. I'm staying here in Poland with the church. And my family are refugees from Ukraine. My mom, my sibling, sister, and brother. Unfortunately, our father, he's a preacher and he's out in Ukraine. When the first day of war started, we hoped it will end soon, but it didn't. And the worst part was that our city Brzezhansk was occupied on the second and third days of war. So just from the start, and we couldn't leave the city at all. And the pharmacies, the food stores were completely empty. People couldn't buy food or even like simple medicine. And also we didn't have any network or we couldn't even call that we are alive. And our grandmother, she was so worried and we couldn't tell her that we are alive. It was so bad. Ruslana and her family are among the millions of refugees fleeing the conflict in Ukraine. Few know where they will end up. Majority of us don't have relatives or friends here, and the only people who help is church. The church can give us a chance to have a future and help us with the basic things. And here's a bedroom, so we slept here. And it's quite comfortable, it's work here and nice. And we are really glad that church provided us a place to sleep. Adventist churches across Europe are redefining what it means for a church to be a sanctuary. ADRA supports their efforts to take in thousands of refugees. Jesus never asked, who are you? What is your nationality? Are you a good person or a bad person? He was called that. And I think this is a good example for us. When we are helping others, it's like Jesus hands we do through us. We change because of Jesus, of his impact. And we want to be his hands. We want to be his food. Global humanitarian agency ADRA is very developing and believing. ADRA leads you to God. The AS, the Rama Humanitaria de Defesa de Cristo, is a comienza que existe que en muchos asistencias. Right now, the organization has people in and around Ukraine who have been hundreds of thousands of people today. The roots they are calling are getting involved as well. The American aid group is going much farther, 5,000 miles farther, to provide direct help. It's all in the water, it's all in the weapons, it's in the community centers, and it's done as well. It's not for volunteers across the border themselves into Ukraine. This conflict, there are supplies. 
And then they said, like, don't worry, you can feel like it happens here and we will help you because we are your brothers and sisters and guys. They just supported us and that meant so much. I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Thank you for participating in our church and study. Please stay tuned for our next service.